such a pleasure to see all of you coming from many places around the United States and uh, other countries as well. So welcome everybody. Um, I see we have people uh, from uh, New York and across the States. Uh, uh, Kai Lewis is uh, joining us, also a wonderful photographer from London. Andrew Russo is joining us from Milan, Italy. Uh, Kerry from uh, Chicago and uh, many other people. Uh, so thank you all for coming and um, thank you, Richard, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, Thank you uh, for, uh, for having me. I'm, I'm uh, honored and delighted to be here. Okay, well, excellent. So um, I'm Bill Travis, and I'd like to briefly introduce myself before we get started. I was a tenured professor of art history at the University of Michigan Dearborn for several years, and then 20 years ago reinvented myself as an artist. I like to think this background gives special insight into art from dual perspectives, looking in as a scholar and looking out as a creator. I've published several books and scholarly articles and have had exhibitions in museums and galleries on four continents. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our featured speaker, Richard Wilcox. Richard was born in Waterbury, Connecticut in 1945. He completed his education in 1966 at the Payer College of Art, where he studied art history, perspective drawing, furniture, and textile design. He moved to New York City in 1966, where he worked for a furniture designer before starting off on his own as a designer of furniture and textiles. His designs were sold and manufactured in the United States and in France. Studies at the International Center of Photography and the New School provided him the necessary background to begin his career in photography in 1999. Since that time, his work has been exhibited in three galleries and is in private collections in the United States and Japan. Now, let's get started. Um, we're gonna be talking about Richard's Scaffold series in New York City. So, um, over the course of um, the next half hour or so, um, we'll be um, uh, talking about them. If I could just ask everybody to please mute yourself, except Richard, don't mute yourself. The rest of you, if you could please do that so we don't get sound interference. And um, after the presentation, I'd like to invite everybody to participate in a discussion. You can ask a question in the chat or just raise your hand and um, ask Richard directly. So as we get into your series, uh, Richard, I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you, um, how did you get the idea to, to photograph Scalf? Sorry, I can't even speak today. Um, how did you get the idea to photograph scaffolds? Well, I... Um... Uh, one day, uh, maybe two years ago, I guess, I was walking through the um, Trinity Church churchyard past the south facade of the Trinity building, which is what you see up on the screen right now. I think everybody can see it. And I noticed how the sunlight was uh, reflecting off of the steel rods of the scaffold. And I thought it was very pretty. Um, I didn't think that there was much I would be able to do with it. You know, it seemed um, as pretty as it was, it was also a little bit boring, but I thought I would take the picture anyway and save it. Anyway, I walked around the back of the building and down uh, sort of circumnavigated it and came down Broadway and saw this facade of the same building. And I thought this was, this was the beginning of a series. I, I was, I was uh, smitten. Um, it was a cathedral. It was you know, soaring over Broadway, and I thought, you know, I've got to do something with this. This is the same building. This is the Trinity Building, which is a double building, as you can see. Um, and the entire thing was uh, sheathed in, in scaffolds and was quite beautiful. So that's really how it started, Bill. Uh, yes, the cathedral. This, I, with, I with love this, that. With this build, this, this photograph right here. Well, um, now. Um, can you talk about the size um, of uh, the images? I know they're, they're quite large. Um, so um, 
what what is the size and and what led you to um, to create work uh, uh, that's so large? Well, I thought that the they were uh, they are forty five. The prints, the the um, um, image is forty five inches high, and I thought that it best to make them big. That they would they would best. Uh, uh, describe the um, uh, grandeur, as I saw it, grandeur of the uh, of the scaffolds, and in fact they really did. In the in the um, show at uh, Soho Photo Gallery in New York in November, the um, there were three of them uh, hanging one right next to the other, and I have to say they looked quite grand, and I was very happy uh, that I did them as large as I did. I didn't always plan on doing that, but uh, in the end, I made that decision and I'm very glad that I did. So the, the uh, images are 45 inches. And then of course we have the mats and the frames which add to that. Yes, I, I saw that show at Soho Photo Gallery, which uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's in uh, Lower Manhattan on White Street. It was very impressive, uh, just uh, uh, very grand, um, images at this scale, which are, uh, uh, you know, as you said, uh, reminiscent in a way of Gothic architecture, uh, Gothic without being uh, Gothic. Now, um, following up on that, uh, here's a, um, a well-known image uh, by Frederick Evans from the early 20th century, uh, showing the interior of Bourges Cathedral in France, a uh, Gothic building. And I know this uh, image is important to you. And I think it was relevant in the context of uh, Gothic architecture that we've been alluding to. Uh, could you comment on this image and its importance sure, to your own work? Can. It's, um, I first saw these, these uh, photographs of Frederick Evans um, at MoMA in um, the mid 60s, I think, um, and thought they were sublime. I've never forgotten them. Um, and it was only when I was into the scaffolds, when I was actually doing in the process of seeking them out and making the photographs that I realized what I was doing was trying to replicate through the scaffolds, trying to repl replicate the feeling, the feeling that I had, that I got from Frederick Evans' sublime photographs. Um, there will be more, uh, uh, I think maybe the next one, Bill, is no, not not that. Well, uh, that's um, well, that one actually. That's what I have. That one, okay. That one is uh, the uh, Tour Saint Jacques in Paris by Brassailles. Um, uh, it is very. Do you, do you have scaffold number one there? Uh, would you like this? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Um, I realized, as I say, only after taking the pictures that my scaffold number one, which is what is up on the screen now, it is a, I think, one of the grandest scaffolds I've ever seen. And I caught it in very early morning light, as you can see the sunlight reflecting off these steel rods. And it was after I took this photograph that I realized it was really very similar to the Brassai photograph of the Tour Saint Jacques which was just up on the screen. Um, so that's, that, that, that's, the, the, that's the relationship to Gothic, to Gothic uh, architecture and Gothic, Gothic sensibility. Yeah. Yes, very interesting. But now um, out of the realm of church architecture and extended as, as you have observed elsewhere into common utilitarian objects. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I just think that the, um, architect of the Tour Saint-Jacques would be uh, astonished and uh, delighted probably to see that <laughs> hundreds of years later that work lives on in a completely different idiom. I mean one of the things that uh, scholars write about Gothic architecture is um, how skeletal it is in its structure and so you've kind of carried that to the next step. Yes. Um, now uh, can you, uh, here's a um, uh, an example of a um, photograph you've taken before working on it. Yes. Um, so we'll show the before and after view. This is the before. 
Uh, can you talk about your approach? Sure, I can. Uh, this is the one that I feel relates most closely to the Frederick Evans photograph that you showed a few minutes ago. Um, it is uh, something that I just saw on the street, walking down the street. Um, I thought it was, like the previous one, very grand. Uh, I took this photograph of it. Um, I liked the, the um, upward striving of it. I loved the, the, the positive um, uh, striving, I guess. I can't think of another word for it, uh, Bill. Um, I took this photograph and then got it home and um, worked on it, uh, converted it to black and white and worked on it and came up with the next one. Okay. Hopefully, I think the next one. Yes, that, that one. Um, and there you still have the, the, the vertical, the light colored vertical um, uh, shaft in the center of the, of the picture, heaving upward uh, out of the, uh, the mess at the bottom. And um, in, in I feel it has the um, same um, aspirational grandeur that the um, uh, photograph of the Evans uh, Cathedral has, or similar, not quite identical, I must say, but similar aspirational grandeur to the Evans picture. I happen to be very fond of this one. Yes, as, as am I. Uh, I like the way you talk about this because a moment ago we were talking about structure, the skeletal appearance of um, Gothic and Gothicizing um, images, and, and now you're talking about striving, which takes it to kind of like the inner emotional world of, um, of the architecture. I see them, Bill, as, um, well, less this one. Can you go back to the, to the previous one for a moment? I see it as striving to, to lightness or to transcendence of some kind. I do see the, that central vertical um, uh, element as really sort of, as in Gothic architecture, um, heaving upward um, in a very positive, optimistic, um, energetic way. This uh, uh, interview would sound wonderful in German. I love all this idea of striving to light. It's it's very uh, very philosophical and abstract in a way, um, but we'll we'll keep it in English. Um, for, now, for now, let's do that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Translations will follow later. Um, we'll do that later. Yes, um, and I, I hope everybody uh, looking at uh, the screen can get a sense of the great uh, variety that uh, Richard has been able to achieve in this series certainly uh, caused me to look at scaffolds in a very different way. Um, so uh, can you tell us about this one? Sure I can. This is, um, this is on Park Avenue. This was at a, uh, a church that was under renovation on Park Avenue. Um, it, at first, was the, it was the verticals that attracted me so much, uh, like the verticals in Gothic architecture. Um, what uh, on the left side, toward the left side of the image, uh, you have some light, four or five light areas of verticals, and those are the sunlight uh, reflected on the scrim that one sees now so often on scaffolds. Um, this one is um, struck me as a little bit more utilitarian than some of the others. It's, it's, it's uh, well, it's kind of, is a kind of stairway to the clouds. It doesn't have the, the uh, upward, as strong an upward thrust as some of the others have. Nevertheless, I happen to be very fond of it. Um, this particular image is a little bit dark. The, uh, the dark areas there, these dark squarish areas there, are actually uh, the boards that make up the floor on which the workers uh, work. Yeah, you know, when I look at these pictures, um, the, I, I can definitely see the Gothic connection, but um, I'm equally reminded of Piranesi, which might be interesting for our Italian audience as well. But now instead of being ruins, 
um, of an ancient civilization. They're harbingers of, a, of one that's in the process of growth. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that will come back later. Um, okay, Grand Central Station. Uh, sure, everybody recognized it. Um, <laughs> so has this project caused you to look at New York in a different way? Um, it has. Uh, I've, since I've been looked, spending so much time looking up, I've been noticing the buildings that have the, the, have the soaring quality that Gothic architecture has more than I normally do. And likewise, I've been noticing the buildings that don't have that quality and um, how they both affect the streetscape. Um, personally, I think there are too many photographs, too many uh, streets that don't have that uh, quality. And I would, I would think that could benefit hugely from adding uh, scaffolds to their, to their buildings. Yeah. But I think I probably, in a minor, that's a minority opinion. <laughs> I, uh, I guess that's what the French would call a professional deformation. <laughs> you know, when, when you see a scaffold, now you want everything to be a scaffold. I, well, it would be nice. It would give me more to choose from. Uh, they're not easy to, the good ones aren't easy to find. This is Grand Central Station. It was a very temporary um, installation. They were fixing some of the masonry wall on one of the balconies. Um, the light area that you can see is um, half of one of the chandeliers. I. I think it has a nice quality. I think the half of it has a nice quality. It's kind of mysterious. Uh, had mm. I been able to take the entire uh, uh, chandelier, had I been able to get it, I probably would have, but I kind of like it the way it is. Um, and I thought the, the, the darkness of this one was uh, once again, very Gothic. Um, and it reminded me, this one reminds me a little bit more of Hugh Ferris than it reminds me of Frederick Evans, but, um, Anyway. Yes, for, for those uh, in the audience who are familiar with Hugh Ferris, um, uh, definitely has that, um, that feeling to it. So it's, it's really interesting because these images, I mean, you keep on bringing up Gothic and, and yet at the same time, uh, you've transformed it. So there's nothing derivative here. It's a, it's a real transformation taking place. Um, ever since I've, known your work, uh, Richard, especially on the scaffold projects, I've heard you say things like, oh, I have to get there at 1225 for the lights, you know, or, or uh, oh, this one is like a 245 <laughs> building, something like that. So you're very attentive to how the light is gonna fall on the building. And uh, I think for those of us looking at this without that background, you wouldn't that. know. I couldn't get it before, okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I wonder if, if people could yeah. mute themselves, uh, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oops, yeah. yeah. Uh, We're getting a little bit of noise interference. Yeah, yeah, if you could yeah. please yeah. mute yourself. Um, okay. So this, this is the only one that where the, the light was in the interior and it didn't matter. I didn't have to worry about uh, whether it was a sunny day or a cloudy day or what time it was. This was the same all day, every day for as long as it lasted. But yes, on the others, all of the others uh, were very dependent on the uh, position of the sun especially uh, uh, scaffold number one which was at sunrise when I got that beautiful uh, reflection off the um, upper upper part of, of that uh, yeah. structure. Yeah, and I guess since uh, the city of uh, Manhattan uh, is so built up, you have to be very careful uh, what time you do it so you get that effect. Well, as uh, yeah, so, so many times I planned, uh, I thought I was uh, very smart and knew my astronomy and I planned the uh, the, um, the uh, my uh, appointments with the scaffolds very carefully, only to discover oh. that the sun was in the right position. It was behind the building, so um, you know it's all it's all sort of a crapshoot, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, this is my personal favorite. Um, you have taught um, about aspiration um, yeah. in uh, reference to your 
work. Um, I, I wonder if uh, you could um, uh, address that um, in, in looking at this photograph. What, what, what do you mean by aspiration? Well, by aspiration, um, I mean the kind of striving towards, uh, I think I said about uh, towards lightness, towards transcendence. I mean, um, <clears throat> transcendence. I think I'll yeah. just get that, that though, transcendence. Yeah. This, this the, and, and in this particular photograph, the, it is that vertical uh, line uh, just to the left, to the right of center that I found so powerful. Um, I mean, I think it's a powerful image. I think the whole image is powerful, but I think that vertical line really gives it that uh, transcendence. And that is created, that is a, um, what you have here on, on, to the right and the left of that vertical line are scrims and they failed to join or to overlap each other. And that is what caused that vertical line. Um, this would might be kind of an interesting one to show, Bill, if you have the- um, You wanna uh, see the next one? The, the, raw, the raw one. No, that's- uh, You don't yeah. have, okay, that's fine. That, that, that's fine. Yeah, well- but Why don't you, you like this one so much? Can you talk about this one? Oh, well, you're being the one uh, interviewed, but uh, I, I love the uh, light and dark contrast. And you were talking about aspiration and transcendence, which strike me as um, almost um, spiritual ways of thinking about the work. Right. Yes. Um, at the same time, I think they're very elegant. And I think also that this tendency in your work and, and here maybe especially to defy gravity has a type of ballet like character, mm -hmm. which also mm -hmm. defies gravity. So it's, a, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's kind of, I mean, this suggests so many different metaphors, but one of them is a type of dance in the sky. Uh, I think it's really interesting. And it also reminds me of spider webs, um, uh, maybe primarily spider webs um, in the sense that uh, we're just, little insects building things. And here are our constructions, which are beautiful and mm -hmm. evanescent. And tomorrow they won't be there, just like a spider web. Uh, but, um, but you caught something uh, really um, so, so beautiful. And those are some of the metaphors that I think of. But I think that um, as, as people are looking at your work, they might come up with their own. They're kind of like uh, Rorschach tests of sensibility. It would be very interesting to hear what other people's uh, opinions or thoughts are. I did think with this of this one that it seemed to be defying gravity. And I, and I liked that. And I think that's a kind of transcendence. And I, um, um, yeah, anyway. I, I, yes. I like that's one of the reasons I'm as fond of this picture as I am. Yeah, well, they're all beautiful. Um, but uh, we, we have favorites, this, this one is mine. Um, now, um, what we've done today is shown a uh, very reduced selection of your work. There could have been a lot more process shots showing how you started with something and then transformed it. I mean, for me, word transform is very important in your work, how you transformed it into uh, art and um, transformed the way people look at these. I mean, I can't walk down the streets of Manhattan now without thinking of your photographs. <laughs> um, so uh, th there would be many more that we could show, but today's just a selection to, um, you know, whet people's appetite. And I know that you're continuing on this project. Um, yes. Could you tell us about that, uh, what you're continuing to do with your uh, photography in this area, and then what you want to do with this specific project? Well, I'm, I, I want, um, I'm, I'm, I'm photographing more scaffolds. They are, as I think I said earlier, they're kind of hard to find. Uh, the really good ones are hard to find but I am um, expanding my search uh, 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 from 
Midtown and uh, the Wall Street area to further uptown, and I'll sort of uh, I'll go wherever necessary to uh, to uh, to find them. I'd like to say of this one that's on the screen right now, this is the only one that I took that I was where, when I where I was consciously aware of a Frederick Evans Cathedral interior, and to my eye, that light area just to the left of center looks like a clear story um, Gothic uh, window. And one can imagine that beneath that, with all of that uh, stuff going on there, that that's just the light that's coming in through that window. But this, this is the only one that I, where I really was thinking of Fred, Fred, Frederick uh, Evans. Um, yeah, I would like to, uh, I'd like to get um, eight or 10 more um, really good ones. And uh, I would like to have another show, at least one more show, and then ultimately do a book. That's my plan. Yes, yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, exhibition and, and the book. Uh, they're so beautiful, uh, just right here on the screen, but uh, to see an original um, is, is quite, um, quite powerful. So um, yes, now, uh, before we open up to questions, um, I want to put this on the screen so that uh, all of um, uh, the audience today and then, uh, and then a future audience, because this will go online at some point, uh, can refer to Richard's website, Richard Wilcox Photography. And uh, Richard um, has been photographing uh, many things uh, in addition to scaffolds and he has um, uh, beautiful images um, in different, um, on different subjects and, um, uh, and, and uh, with different moods also. For instance, uh, uh, I think everybody can look forward to uh, his work on the Brooklyn Bridge, which is coming up very different in feeling kind of closer to Whistler in a way. Uh, but please take a look at his website. And uh, if you want to get in touch with Richard, uh, there is contact information on, on the site. Yes. So at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, stop the screen share and open it up to um, conversation. And uh, so uh, if you can please unmute yourselves and uh, feel free to ask a question in the chat or just raise your hand and uh, we can get uh, started there. Um, now, um, oh, I just saw a message uh, from some people. So, uh, oh, we also have people from, um, let's see, Colorado also, Connecticut, New York, London, Milan, uh, it's quite international. Um, are there any questions in the chat? Um, uh, Tim commented on the beautiful gradient of sacred versus profane. Um, wow. It's not, it's not uh, I don't think it's phrased as a question, but now we're ready. So go ahead. Richard, I have a couple of things to say. It's Larry. Um, oh, Larry, hi. Yeah, oh, I, and also, if you'd like to um, put on the video so we can see you, that would be good, too. I will do that. Unable to start video. Oh, OK. Well, we will imagine how you look. OK. Oh, wait a second. OK, you can do it now. I can. Ah, there I am. Hi. Ah, there you are. Uh, Richard, I'm going to have three things. I'm, I'm going to put them all out at once, because if I don't, I'll forget them. Um, when you when you're walking down the street and you're looking for things, do you see how the how the scaffolding relates to the building? Is the building itself important? That's number one. Number two, <laughs> when um, you know, I as a, a person walking down the street and passing by some some uh, scaffolding, I see it as big and heavy and messy. But you're able to see something in there and, and as Bill said, transform it into something that's so delicate and lacy. Um, it, you make, you make, you do an amazing job 
um, in Thank seeing. You. Thank you very much, Larry. And the third thing is, is really simple. I, I noticed that there are no people in your pictures, uh, which is an indication of you either get there really early before people start working or you get there late after they're finished. Uh, is, is that done consciously? Well, uh, it is. It, it, that's, I'll start at the last question first. It is done consciously. I find I do have some scaffold photographs that have some of the workers uh, there, quite visible, on the platforms. But what happens is that the photograph becomes about the person. The eye goes right to the, my eye anyway, goes right to the, to, to the worker, to the person. And it's then less about the scaffolds and about all of the, the grand attributes I've been talking about. <laughs> um, so does that answer that question? Oh yes, yes, thank yeah. you. Um, and let's see, what, uh, you were afraid you were gonna forget. I, now I forgot. <laughs> The, the laciness of the of the scaffolding. Well, that, that was really not a question. The, the, the one with the question was, uh, when you see scaffolding, it, how important is the building itself? Oh, the building. Well, and uh, it's important. Um, uh, in one of the pictures uh, that, that we just looked at, the building provides a, an anchorage for the scaffold. Um, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to describe um, without looking at it, but the, the, the scaffold is very much hanging on to the structure of the building. And, and that is a part of what makes it powerful to, to my eye. Uh, in other photographs, the building is not important. And I really just want the the image, the scaffold to, um, to be either wider than the building so that I don't have to include the building or taller than the building. Um, but it depends, B both, um, uh, some of them uh, include the building, some of them don't. Yeah. Thank you. I, I also wanted to say that I, I too saw your show at Soho Photo Gallery and it was magnificent. Thank you very much, Larry. The size, the size you chose and the amount of images you chose were, were just perfect. Thank you so much. Looking forward to your next show. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and if I can add to that, uh, seeing them in person gives them also a tactile quality. You know, can experience them so differently than just uh, a screen image. So next time Richard has a show, um, I think we'd all enjoy that. Uh, yes, more questions. Tom. Hi. It's nice to see everybody from. Um, very nice to see you, Tom. Thank you for coming. Oh, um, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here and nice to see um, fellow Soho photo people. Uh, I just, uh, when you had your show in um, November, uh, we were delighted to have it. It was it was terrific to see it in person. And you had shown me uh, smaller images. To see those large images, um, as Bill said, there's a tactile quality to the work. And you had the opportunity to stand there and really kind of sink into those pieces. Um, you have an initial impression, and then if you stand a while, it, it, it really would draw visitors in, and many people who came would really stand and just be sucked in, I would say, into the work. Uh, it, was, it was quite interesting to see. Um, my, I have one question, which is, had, had you thought about doing this in color at any point? No, I never work in color, Tom. Um, I think I find it, I find, uh, I think I just find it too difficult and too distracting. Um, yeah. And color is, color is a whole different thing. And I'm just not, I like tone, tonal qualities, lights and darks. Um, but uh, color is, color balance, color theory, it's a whole different thing that I'm really not that familiar yeah. with. 
So no, I, I never have worked in color. However, as you might have noticed, I did photograph all of them right. in color and then and then uh, uh, converted them to black and white. Yeah. Well, uh, they're extremely successful in black and white. I, I, I don't know <laughs> that color would not have um, made them better. I don't think probably would have been much more complicated. They're they, beautiful. They, they so would we're looking, be. We're looking so, forward to seeing your another show at Soho Photo. That's great. I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, Susan. Hi. Hi, um, I've known Richard for ages and have watched his photographs and eye photography evolve and especially the um, scaffolding, which to most New Yorkers are a real nuisance um, and ugly. And Richard, I have to say, has like an exquisite eye to be able to look at something like this and see the beauty in it's being abstract. And I'm a designer and artist myself, and I so appreciate how he's taken something um, to a whole, <clears throat> excuse me, to a whole other abstract level. And um, for me, looking at his work, it brings, I, I don't know, it just brings me joy in its abstraction, in its beauty and abstraction. So I, I really don't have a question for Richard, but I just want to tell him um, my reaction uh, to his really unusual, unusual work and how well every single one of them that I've seen has turned out. So I want to thank Richard, my dear friend, for his unique eye and wonderful whatevers <laughs> in photographing some of the, what would be considered the ugliest structures in New York. Thank you, my darling friend, Richard. Thank you very much, Sue. That's lovely, thank you. Uh, along those lines, I want to read something in the chat in case uh, some of you are not able to see it, uh, which comes from Kai Lewis. I hope that's okay, Kai, if I read it to everybody. Um, Kai Lewis is a, um, is a brilliant photographer uh, near London, England, and I had the joy of interviewing her a few weeks ago. Uh, so uh, a tribute from Kai is a very uh, meaningful one. Uh, she writes, thank you for sharing such very beautiful photos. It would be amazing to see them in real life. I hope we all have the opportunity for that. Thank you, Kai. Um, we're ready for the next question. You can put one in hey, the chat. Uh, Patrick, in here. thank you. Uh, I guess it's not really much of a question, but uh, hello, Richard. Thank you very much hello, for Patrick. sharing your, your insight, your, your thought process, and, and your picture-taking process was uh, very enlightening. And uh, I did see your show at, at Soho. I oh. uh, enjoyed it quite a bit, and it actually, uh, when I saw it, I remember it kind of was, uh, I, I had a show similarly there on construction sites, but it was kind of a much closer, uh, and I remember seeing yours, and uh, mine was still in progress, and I thought that they would be wonderful shows together one day, so, uh, and the fact that you're giving validity to us folks who just take pictures of those random and boring construction sites uh, to try to show others that there's more to it than just uh, fences and metal and uh, ugliness. Uh, I, lo I love all that. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So keep, Patrick, keep working and uh, I'll see you next winter. We'll, uh, Got it. we'll do something. Be a, that'd be a, be a pleasure. I'd, I'd enjoy that. Thank you. It would be. It would be for sure. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming. For, well, wherever there's a construction site in New York, you're likely to find Richard. Um, <laughs> I do wonder about that. Uh, but, uh, uh, let's see, did we lose Richard? I don't see him now. I'm here. Oh, oh you're there. Okay, good. Um, now, um, we have time for another question. Uh, Richard, it's Linda. Hi, Linda. Thank you for coming. 
Well, I'm sorry I was a little late. I was gardening this morning. But um, uh, when you were talking about um, Frederick Evans' photographs, mm -hmm. uh, did you have that in mind when you started work on the scaffolding? I didn't, Linda. Um, I was, um, yeah, I guess this, I said this right at the very beginning. I, I um, saw, first saw the Frederick Evans photographs in the 1960s at MoMA. And I never forgot them. They were just, they, they really are so impressive, so powerful. Um, and there was something, I related to them in a personal way. There was something, to use this word again, uh, there was something aspirational about them that I, that I just loved. Mm -hmm. and almost, I don't like using this word, but here goes, uh, spiritual about them. Um, and it wasn't until I was at least halfway or more into photographing the scaffolds that I realized it was, I was photographing the same thing I mean, my interest in it was the same as my interest in the Frederick Evans photographs, but, but I wasn't doing them, I wasn't um, mimicking Gothic architecture or Frederick Evans consciously. Uh, the one photograph that Bill put up on the screen, I think it was the last photograph, was the only one um, that, um, that I took uh, uh, and where I was conscious that in mind. That I was imitating Frederick Evans. Because my, my feeling with, I mean, your, your photographs are just wonderful and I really enjoyed your show. Thank you. um, uh, there, there's always a mystery to it. And I think that's what draws people in. Um, it's, it's hard to determine what exactly you're looking at. And then you realize it doesn't matter what you're actually looking at <laughs> that it's it you know it is the composition and the way you, you know you've captured the light and um and you can just lose yourself in in your work um that's what's so wonderful and so uh, it is a good comparison with gothic architecture because it's oh, I'm glad, there I'm is glad a certain great. amount of mystery and especially on a rainy day or cloudy day <laughs> right yes i'm glad you yeah. agree thank you very much yeah. thank you we have a question from tim hello tim hello there he is <laughs> i um wanted to pick up on something that linda just mentioned and and one thing that's common with all your work is kind of capturing that light and um you know, I find it interesting that you say if you bring it, bring it back into color, um, it complicates the you know the, the composition of, of the photo and and, and the art. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, you're capturing all these in 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 an extreme urban environment where there's a series of edges and uh, shadows that are very deliberate, right? From buildings and and um, and, and poles and, and, and wood and, and, and something that you do is you really soften um, the composition of the photos with the light. And that's where my comment before around the gradient is just so uh, impressive. And, and I think you just, you know, you create that, uh, that softening nature to, to all your work in a extreme urban environment that is New York. And I think that's really impressive. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. Thank you for joining us, too. Sure, and I had a follow-up question, if I may. Oh, sure. Um, do you typically capture these moments from the ground plane? Or, yes. okay, so you never go to a higher elevation? Because I, I was noticing in the, in the Grand Central one, I feel like all of that, um, you know, composition in there just looked really uh, on the human scale, as opposed to, like, you know, Grand Central being on this huge scale, you really kind of brought it down to the human scale. That, that's very, that's a, a, a very interesting that I was in an elevated position with the Grand Central. Uh -huh. Yeah, so if you remember the, the chandelier, the, 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 the half image of the chandelier, I was probably at about eye level with that chandelier. But that, that's the only one. The others are all from the street and Many of them are at 20 or 25 stories high. So they're really, you know, up there. 
Uh, I'd like to, uh, thank you, Tim. Um, I'd like to read another message that came through in the chat um, uh, from Kai Lewis, uh, who says, I find some of Richard's photos very redolent of forests, the grandeur, the linear qualities, and the light just peeking through. They have a Japanese aesthetic to me. The spiritual aspect comes across as does your passion. Beautiful comment from Kai. Would yeah, you like to you. comment you, on, on that, uh, the idea of the uh, forest or the Japanese aesthetic? The Japanese aesthetic, um, well, I'm looking at one right now and I can, I could, I, I I might be inclined to ask Kai about the Japanese aesthetic. <laughs> Kai, would, would you Maybe want to? Maybe it's the simplicity to... of them. Is it the, the I, 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 I can't, uh, I, I, I don't have anything to say about that. Well, that will be for tomorrow's session. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, there isn't a session tomorrow, but we can all think about it. Uh, no, I, I, I think I can see. Um, uh, what Kai is talking about. Kai, would you like to comment on that? I can. You'll have to excuse me, um, Bill. Uh, Richard, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm getting over COVID, so I'm a bit oh. of shambles. Brother. Uh, what I was alluding to was, I think, the fact that um, the, the linear qualities, the black and white, and just that there is something in that for me that it's almost as though you, you you're looking up you're standing in the uh, on the ground in a forest and you've just got this this beautiful um i don't know it's just just all the interconnectedness of the the what would be the tree trunks and the the branches and everything and you've just got that and the light hitting those and as you look up you've got that spiritual aspect where you just get glimpses of the sky coming through it's so it, it's that sort of thing but in a, obviously in an urban setting mm -hmm. you've you, there's a translation you know from that from the rural to that and you know you that's yeah i mean that that's that's sort of how i i see them i, I find them amazing I, I would i would so love to actually come across and and see the um, the the fossilized thank, images. Thank you so much. That was that was lovely. It was really very nice to hear uh, um, hear your uh, your your thoughts about them. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, and uh, if you do come across, uh, please uh, let me know, and uh, I would be glad to show them to you. <laughs> Oh, we'll all visit you in London. Uh, so, that's bad, eh? Be there tomorrow. Um, <laughs> that, that's a really interesting comment to me, too, because um, I was trained as an art historian, and um, the very earliest scholarly writing on Gothic architecture from Germans coming in the early 19th century uh, thought of Gothic architecture as a manifestation in stone of the forest. And so there's that romantic sensibility, which I think Kai picked up on so beautifully, so emotively, but there, there is that interesting connection with nature and especially the forest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and, then, and then the Japanese quality she brought up. Well, I wonder if I could ask another question myself. Um, you were talking about skipping over some buildings, but you thought some were really good. So what makes it really good for you? Um, the scaffold has to be separated from the building in one way or another. It either has to overlap the building on the right or the left. Uh, it has to um, go beyond the, uh, the roof line, the cornice or roof line or whatever, because it, the first photograph you put up, Bill, was uh, a very a very large scaffold and it was against this is the trinity building it was against the building there was nothing um nothing exceeded the edges of the building in in any way and it was boring it was repetitive it was uh it was uh i thought kind of boring but when they when they take up a life of their own which not too many of them do they become much more interesting. So, so I, I 
generally, I prefer them to be separate from the building. Yes, there's uh, so many aspects to this that uh, people just wouldn't think of. And, uh, you know, walking by the scaffolds, as, as Tim commented on, utilitarian, often rather ugly things, which you've transformed into uh, your unique vision and this, uh, this, these beautiful evocations of light and dark yeah, and, and so much more than that. Um, so I feel that this presentation is the type of thing that plants a seed and that we'll be thinking about your work for a long time. And uh, so please everybody do take a look at uh, Richard's website and, um, and thank you all for coming. It's been a very engaging conversation with so many different perspectives and um, insights. Thank you all very much. Thank and you. Uh, okay. will um, eventually be put online. It'll probably be on a YouTube channel. So if you're in touch with, with me or with Richard, uh, we can give you the link. Uh, so I guess that concludes it for today. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>